Hello, Gene Schwimmer here, and welcome back to In Case You Missed It. What I do here, well, one thing I'm going to do here, and I'll give you a little heads up here, I'm thinking of changing the title of this vlog to The Compassionate Conservative, because I'm a conservative and I'm compassionate, but also to create more of a brand name, because I'm new at this YouTube stuff, and I heard that you have to brand your channel, and then you never know, MSNBC, C. And one of these cable stations, they might just want to call me up and give me my own show. And if they do that, I don't want to just call it Gene Schwimmer. I mean, I could, but I think I might want to have a kind of a brand name. It also gives me a, a little leeway because when I was using the title, which I still am for a couple more days in case you missed it, it was to fill you in on one or two news events that happened during the day in case you missed it during your busy day. But I also said that I would throw in some of my own comments and these extra comments, my two cents worth, two cents, they come absolutely free of charge. So this is an actual bonus and I want to sometimes talk about a subject that's not necessarily a up to the minute news event that happened, just something that I want to talk about. So giving it a new title gives me a little leeway. Well, you may have noticed that I'm coming to you from outdoors today and this is not a permanent change. The reason for this is I usually record from my office, but it's the day before the 4th of July. You're probably seeing this on the 4th of July and I didn't feel like going into the office. So I'm gonna to talk today about strong presidents and immigration. I guess that's what I'm gonna talk about. And the strong president part comes because, oh, I link to all the stories that I mentioned. I always do that. I put it in the comments below the screen so you can read the entire article if you want to. Hopefully after this vlog is over, don't don't turn it off now because I'm not done yet. I want to talk about immigration and the news today is, this is a New York Times story, that immigration is way, way down from Central America. And this is before Donald Trump builds his wall that he was talking about building and yet immigration is way way down and it's because if this title is accurate because people are scared of what's going to happen and that just shows you a strong president he's not doing anything he hasn't hasn't even built the wall yet and illegal aliens could flood in before the wall is built which is going to take a while they're stopping now because we're finally rounding up illegal aliens and sending them back out of the country. So they know, or at least they feel, that they're taking a chance coming in and what's the point? They're gonna get sent back anyhow, or maybe even put in jail. Who knows what they're afraid of? But that shows you a strong president. He just mentions something and he gets results. And just uh, digress to Syria for a minute. There was a chemical attack, the Syrian army, the chemical attack. We uh, sent them a gift of uh, a bunch of cruise missiles. And this time we just got wind of uh, another potential attack. And Tillerson, the Secretary of State, just let them know, don't do that. And they didn't do that. It's night and day between this president and Barack Obama, whether you like Trump or not, or whether you agree with him on illegal immigration or not, this is a strong president who just merely by speaking gets results. Now, Obama may not have done anything about immigration or not much because he doesn't want to do anything. He wants to flood the country with mostly Latin American illegal aliens who will become citizens or even without becoming citizens vote on the expectation that they will vote for Democrats. That's one point, but the second point is that even if he wanted to do something about immigration, who pays attention to Barack Obama? Whether it's domestically or overseas in, uh, in Syria. He had his red line and the red line got crossed. He did nothing and so there were no results. Donald Trump, chemical attack, he made his red line. The Syrians crossed it, expecting the same result as from Barack Obama. They were disabused of that notion with a bunch of cruise missiles, and this time they just had to say, don't do it, and that was it. And now we switch over to immigration, because I do want to talk about immigration. That was my main reason for doing the vlog today. And there's an important reason why you want to discourage illegal immigration, because we have legal immigration. There is a way 
way for people to get into this country legally. And when people don't come in legally, number one, that tells you we want law-abiding citizens here, people who will obey the law. And just the very fact of them coming in illegally tells us that these are not people that are necessarily going to obey the law. But the main point is that you want diversity and there's a difference between diversity and balkanization, which you don't want. You don't want balkanization, you do want diversity. Balkanization is when you have immigrants from one particular area speaking especially one particular language with one particular culture coming in in such numbers that they form their own communities and they are surrounded by people who speak their own language so they don't have to learn English and they take their culture with them. They don't assimilate into our culture. It creates a great division. It creates people that don't think of themselves as Americans because what separates America from other countries is our common culture is based on an idea of freedom and liberty. And people who come from countries where they don't have that tradition or where everything is corrupt, they don't adapt to our way of life. They become protective of themselves, again, by not thinking of themselves as Americans. We have ethnic gangs such as MS-13, another problem that Obama did nothing about, and not too far from here, Long Island, you have these MS-13 gangs coming in and just terrorizing entire villages. And Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, said he was going to do something about it, and he did. These people are in jail now. They're being picked up, and they're being sent out of the country, or they're going to spend years in prison, depending on what they've done. And getting back to diversity, I can speak on this subject because I happen to be the son of uh, I'm a first-generation American on my father's side. My mother's parents came from Russia. My father came from Czechoslovakia. He came as a refugee. And you have to understand, the geographical lines and the ethnic lines, they break down differently in Europe. So you have the geographic lines that go drawn one way, but then you have ethnic lines that will straddle these geographic borders between countries. So my father was actually born, I think, in the Ukraine, and then he spent most of his life before coming to America in Czechoslovakia, but his native language was Hungarian. So he's Hungarian, but he came from Czechoslovakia. So he came here, and when he came here, the block that we lived on, that I grew up on, he was the only Hungarian. Everybody spoke English. So my father, being not surrounded by other Hungarian speakers, he had to learn English. He was forced to learn English. And then he opened a fruit market, and he had to communicate with the customers. So he had, And they weren't Hungarian either. So he had to learn English. And that was the point, was that well, I can tell you about myself. I went to Germany in 1986, and I was there for about three weeks, and I knew, obviously, I was going to be around German speakers, and I, I had heard about Europeans that they all learn English, but that turned out not to be so true when I went to Germany. But before that, I was living on the Upper East Side in an area called Yorktown, which was at that time a very Germanic community as far as having a lot of ethnic German restaurants and, and general stores and so on and so forth. Most of them are gone now because like most of New York or the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side, you've got a lot of gentrification and, and it's become very upscale. So you have a lot of these stores that could not pay the rent anymore and they're gone. I miss a lot of my favorite restaurants that used to be there. But I would go anyways into this one store called Bremen House and they had a big magazine section and I could pick up German magazines and then I went to the bookstore at Barnes & Noble, I bought myself a German English dictionary and I sat there and I read the magazines with the dictionary next to me and I picked up a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of German. And so I went over to Germany and when I was in Germany for about three weeks. I hope this would allow me to get by, but it didn't. But the point is that after about three weeks, I was actually starting to pick up some German and speak a little bit of German. Just being surrounded after only three weeks by people who did not speak 
English. And that is my point, that if you bring in immigrants, you should bring them immigrants. You want diversity, and you don't want to set up these ethnic enclaves where people are surrounded by the culture that they had in their old country and never learn to become American. They become their own little countries, and they don't assimilate, and they become isolated. And then that's no way for a country, especially a country like the United States, to survive. So one reason that you want legal immigration and you want to stop illegal immigration is because we happen to live right next to Mexico, which has land routes to other parts of Latin America. So you're getting a lot of people that are coming from this one area, so many so that now, obviously, at least in New York, and I'm sure it's where you are, you get on the phone and you get a voicemail these days and there's a Mark A.L. Dos uh, for a number that you pick to get your voicemail in Spanish. So you don't have to know English. For my father, there was no push anything for Hungarian, and today there is no push anything for Hungarian or Chinese or Hebrew or Hindustani or any other language, just Spanish, because you have so many people coming from one country, and that's changing the country, and it's not helping people that have to come in and they have to then later get a job, and they can't speak English. And then it's also becoming bad for people that are even native-born Americans who want to get jobs somewhere, and you're going to reach a point where they won't be able to get a job unless they learn Spanish. And then we're going to become like Canada, a bilingual country. Maybe our currency is going to be in Spanish and English, just like in Canada, where the currency is in French and English, or Israel, where the currency is in Hebrew and Arabic. And it's also not fair because you have Africans and then you have Scots and Englishmen and Frenchmen and Scandinavians who would like to come to America too, but they happen not to live next to the United States or to have a land route to the United States. They have to get on a boat or they have to obviously these days usually take a plane to get here and it's much harder for them to come in illegally and stay here. They at least have to have some kind of a visa to get into the country at the airport. So if you stop illegal immigration and just have only legal immigration, then you can have quotas. Then you can say for every person coming from a Spanish-speaking country, you have to let, let a Frenchman come in, and an Englishman, and an Israeli, and uh, an Arab. And that way you get diversity by having everybody from a different country, and then how do they talk to each other, all these people from these different countries? Well, they have to learn a common language. And what's that language? That language is English. They have to learn English. And that is why it's important to make this point that conservatives were not against immigration. People seem to, uh, especially liberals, this is their criticism. They say, well, you don't want immigration. And we do want immigration, but we want legal immigration. And the reason we want legal immigration is so that we get a diverse mix of people coming into the country who bring all their different cultural heritage with them. It goes into the pot, into the melting pot, and we become one culture, a mixture of all these other cultures, and we all speak a common language. That is what is so important about this country. That is what makes America, America. This is what makes us unique. This is what makes us the most special, greatest country in the world. We welcome diversity, but that's it. We want diversity, e pluribus unum, from many, one. We come from many places, and we get here, and we become one. And that's it for today. I'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow, but definitely soon. Have a really great 4th of July. And when you celebrate, celebrate our independence, but also celebrate what I've been talking about. Celebrate our diversity.